Welcome to Cyber Culture Interface channel. Two weeks ago, we talked about certain skills that are responsible that are necessary for every cybersecurity beginner to have. One of the skills we mentioned is networking basics. And today on Cyber Culture Interface, we are looking at networking basic for beginners in cybersecurity. This is a fundamental skill every beginner is supposed to have as a cybersecurity professional or you're in IT. You need to understand networking because if you don't understand networking, you will not understand properly how to protect devices, protect communication. My name is Olale Kainlori. You are welcome to Cyber Culture Interface. This is where we discuss things that will help beginners in cybersecurity. I've been in, in cybersecurity for about four years and I've helped a number of my friends to also start a journey in cybersecurity. Today we are looking at networking basics. And when we are considering networking basics, fundamental thing we need to understand with networking basics is the OSI model. Like I said earlier on, for you to be able to protect uh, communication, but you to be able to ensure that data that is being communicated or data being shared is properly protected, that is, it's confidential, it has integrity, and is always available. You need to understand what happens when data is being transformed or being transmitted from one device to the other. So the device that is sending the data is the transmission, is where it tr transmits, and the other end it receives. And this is what forms the fundamental of networking. There's a transmission and there's a receiver, and in between the transmitting and receive OSI model, which is the open system interconnection model, gives seven layers. This OSI is just a concept of uh, of, of standardizing the communication between the, these devices, and the OSI model provides seven layers, divides uh, everything that happens between two devices communicating into seven layers, and it starts from the layer 7 which is the application layer down to the layer 1 which is physical layer so we have the application layer the presentation layer session layer the transport layer network layer data link layer and the physical layer i'm going to run through these layers just for us to have a basic understanding of what networking is all about for beginners you can watch this video over and over again if you are watching this video for the first time please share like this video share and subscribe if you enjoying it, please want you to share and subscribe and like so that the channel can grow and so that many people can see our videos and also enjoy what we're sharing. Application layer, like I mentioned, the first layer that I'm going to be talking about is application layer. This is where human beings interact with the computer. And this happens with the help of the web browser for most people who are on the internet. It starts with the web browser. This is where a user sends a message or types a message using a keyboard and types into the uh into the web browser and enters a search so we have web browser like chrome firefox and microsoft edge which i believe most of us are familiar with and this web browser makes use of protocols like the hypertext transfer protocol which helps you know in in, in you know in encoding the message for for the internet we have the file transfer protocol which ensures files which help us to upload files and share files over the internet this protocol is what makes it possible to upload your image and we have the simple network mode image management protocol which is snmp which manages you know configurations on your of your applications or your devices ensuring that the configurations matches what is necessary for you to be able to communicate. So this is what happens at the application layer. As a cybersecurity professional, you want to ensure that your uh, applications are properly you know, configured so that it can communicate. And you want to also ensure that you, uh, the files is able to, you know, to upload, and you, you upload your messages and send. This is the, uh, with the help of application layer applications on your device so the next layer is layer six which is the presentation layer this is where the application converts the message or the data you have imputed into a format so what happens here is encapsulation and encryption also compression also happens so your message that you have typed as a text is being converted into a format that is presentable over the internet or presentable presentable over the uh, device that's going to be communication. So we have formats like the JPEG, we have formats like the PNG, we have a format like the MP4, we have HTML, JavaScript, we have what we call the ASCII, which is American Standard Code for Information Interchange, which is a way in which your data is being presented. And we have the uh, GZIP and ARIA, which are compression methods that make sure that your uh, file or the message or the data you want to send is in is in bits or is in 
sizes that can be shared over the internet then we have the ssl and the tsl with the secure socket lay layer you know this ssl is basically security provided for your for your data you are sending it authenticated so we have a certificate at this presentation layer that makes people come to your website and see that yes this website is authenticated this website is secure the information i'm providing into this web browser will be safe so this is very important as a cyber security professional you need to understand that your if you are managing a website for instance or you are managing a, uh, a company that has a web page you want to make sure that the web page is secured so that the information that your clients or your customers or your or your viewers are pro providing for you their data is secured and is protected and they are interfacing with the with the right person you know ssl certificate authenticates your web page and make sure that the page and gives an indication that your page is secure so this is the presentation layer your data is being presented in a format that is you know can be shared over the internet then we go to section five which is, i mean layer five which is a session layer so basically this is a session where uh two devices establishes and maintains communication so you ensure this session ensures that there's a communication there's a there's a communication channel that ensures that the communication channel is opened you know if you want to talk to someone first of all you want to make sure that person is listening to you it's like asking someone for a listening ear and when the person gives you a listening ear or the person is giving you attention you need to now present your information so session layer is where you engage someone and give get catches the patient's attention get the person's the person to focus on you to listen to you so when two devices are communication device one establishes a session with device two for instance i want to send a message to a uh, to a server i want to request for a web page from google my computer first of all needs to establish a session with the web server where i'm going to be requesting for the information so when i establish a session with the web server i establish this session through using either a tcp or udp connection and then i make use of ports on my devices so sessions are established through ports and one very key thing for a cybersecurity professional here to understand is that these ports where through which these sessions are established must be secured. Now, how do you secure One of the basic security you can do is to make sure that a port that is not actively involved or is not in use or is not important for you to use is always closed. So we have about more than six, about 65,000 plus ports on every on a computer. And you can imagine out of these 65,000 plus ports, you may be using just only three. If the other 64,000 and above ports are left open, this is a very dangerous thing to do because hackers can easily get access to these open ports and log in or hack into your system. So you want to make sure that any ports that you are not using is locked. It's like talking to someone and the person has given you attention or someone is listening to you and you are not saying anything. If you are not saying anything, any other person can easily come and say something. This is what happens. So a session is where you establish a connection and you maintain the connection. Make sure that communication or the session is open for communication. This is what happened in a session. So two devices must establish a session before message so after establishing the session a transport now happens so this transport is the actual communication of the message so this is where data is being sent or is being transported from one device to the other so we have two types of uh, protocol here that are usually in use we have the tcp which is the transmission control protocol and the udp which is user diagram protocol the tcp protocol is more secure is more reliable in the sense that it makes sure that the data you are sending gets to the uh, receiver in the way you have sent it it ensures the integrity of the data, data so as a cyber security professional what we are looking at is that to make sure that the integrity of the data you are sending is delivered but in certain cases you don't need usually uh, you are not bothered about the integrity of the message you are sending this is the case of streamline streaming video streaming when you are watching the, watching a live streaming the person streaming the video does not care whether you receive you know the message or at that moment if there's an, an interruption the person keeps talking you will not wait to confirm that you have had it before it says the next thing if there's a break in transmission it continues so 
this UDP, this is what happens when you use a UDP. UDP doesn't bother whether the message is received, you know, complete or doesn't check for errors. It just keeps sending the signal, keeps sending the signal, keeps sending the data. But in TCP, the data is sent, an acknowledgement is received that, okay, did you get the message? So we we'll have, we'll have what we call the sync, the ACK message, the sync ACK message. So when you send a synchronizing message, it synchronizes, you know, establish the connection, and then test whether you can receive it. Then when you ACK the message, it's an acknowledgement. Then you keep sending message, you know, you keep exchanging data. And when there's an acknowledgement, and when you are done, you know, like we said in the session layer, whenever a transportation or whenever data is being shared and data is no longer being shared, the session is closed. So session layer in layer three opens a session and also closes a session after communication. In transport layer, that is after a session has been established, transportation of data is going on. Data is being sent and exchanged between two devices. So in transport layer, we have the TCP data. Uh, data is being sent through you know the session that has been established in the earlier in layer five. Then we go to layer three which is the network layer. So the network layer is the layer that is responsible for making sure that the data you send gets to the right address or gets to the right network. There are several networks on the internet. There are several local area networks that we have on the internet. And each network on the internet has an address. This is where an IP addressing comes in, which is a logical address, which is a series of numbers, you know, you know, four octets of numbers, you know, that are, that are used to identify different networks. We call them the IP address. So we have IP, for instance, if your IP is one, starts with 198.168 and is sending a message to an IP that starts with 198 or maybe 158. So ensure the network layer ensures that the message goes to the right network. And this is done by the use of routers. Routers are devices on the network that uses IP address to locate different networks. So when you hear IP address, we are talking about network. And you know, it, well, when you have an IP address, is the IP address belongs to a device. Inside the IP address, you have an address that is for the network that identifies the network on the, you know, within the IP address. This can be further broken down, but I'm just doing a high level explanation of what happens. So in this network layer, so we also have the internet control message protocol, which is ICMP, which is used for checking the uh, efficiency of a network. It's used for checking that whether the, the network is, there are errors on the network. And this is what we call ping. For those of us in the IT world, we have had word ping before. If you hear that two systems are pinging each other, that means they are kind of sending messages that is checking that the communication is going home or it's checking that the network is up. So when you want to identify whether a network within the internet is up, you send a ping message to ensure that the network is up. We also have the ARP, which is the address resolution protocol in this uh, layer, which is resolving network addresses, you know, making sure that the data you are transporting gets to the right network. Like I mentioned earlier on, routers is what helps you to achieve this uh, thing that I said. So when the data is leaving the network or when it has identified the network, what next happens is the data link layer, which is, I just wrote the link here, is the data link layer. This is the internet. So it's like after identifying a network, inside the network, there are several devices within a particular network. These, are, these devices are linked to it, they get together. So we, we have, here we have the data link, and this is where we have the internet protocol. So Ethernet is what helps to identify which devices on the on the local area network or which device on the network uh, owns the message that is being sent. So when two devices are communicating over an internet, it eventually gets within the network and the Ethernet protocol helps to identify by the use of what we call the MAC address. So we have the media access control or the logical link layer. So the MAC address is uh is like the label of the device on the local area network so mac address just the way an ip address helps to identify which network a message is going to or a data is being sent to the mac address helps to identify which device within the network receives the message so it can be a wi-fi to it can be a wi-fi local network and then or it can be a cable network so when you have a cable you have what you call the network interface card which is NIC card is present on all devices that uses a cable. So this is where the cable is inserted into the device. And this interface card is 
connecting is what the Ethernet makes use of, you know, to share or to send, distribute the data that is coming. So, uh, like I said, on the transport layer, we have the data moving. On the network layer, we have packets being sent to different network. On the layer two, which is data link layer, we have frames of the frames. We have data frames. They are brought into frames and, and has been shared into different devices. You know? And then when it gets to the devices, this is the physical layer. This is actual layer that, you know, where we have the hardware, we have cables, we have things like CAT5, you know, we can have, we can call them the Ethernet physical layer, or it could be a Bluetooth where you have the Bluetooth device or a Bluetooth adapter. These are all physical devices or physical, uh, the physical layer that is responsible for making sure the data is getting into the device and this layer is where we have electronic bits data is being presented in ones and zero which are positive you know we can call them positive and negative signals you know electronic signals that have actually been transmitted into your computer or your device and is then being converted back with the use of the applications to make sure that you see a graphical you know interface that you can relate with either as pictures or as video or as text messages so let's go over the uh if we go through it again we have the physical layer which is the hardware where layers uh, where electronic signal is being sent and the electronic signal gets into an ethernet data link layer which is where uh device, devices on the network is receiving and sending their message then we have the layer three which is where network is now the, the data now has left the devices or the local area network and is looking for which network this using ip address it identify which network and data is sent in packets and then we get to the transport so when the data is when a network is being identified the data is actually being transported using tcp which is a reliable connection or the udb which is not as reliable as tcp and then we have the session layer which is the uh, which establishes communication basically uh this is session where interaction goes on making use of ports you know and sockets on your devices these ports you know ensure that you are able to maintain several conversations or several communications at the same time like i mentioned earlier if you open your web browser you can have like six seven tabs open on your web browser each of them having a session with the web server that they are communicating to and then we have the presentation layer this is the format you can have mp4 format you can have jpeg we can have data being sent you know as html or data javascript and this presentation layer also is where you secure or you authenticate your web page so that anybody that is coming or any user that is sending or sharing information with you is kept safe and secure integrity of your message is mentioned is maintained via uh, you know through this layer also and then we have the application layer which comprises of your web browsers or, or, or file transfer applications that help that helps to make sure that your information you know is readable or is being uh collected you know and being displayed so this is basically basically an interface or interaction point with humans thank you very much i hope you you've uh been able to get one or two things from this networking basics and if you are new here you are just hearing most of this terminology for the first time you can watch it over and over again for you to understand the concept and also you need to go forth and do more research like we said one of the basic skills of a cyber security professional is to be able to research so it is now left you need to go ahead to do more research on the things that i've mentioned this is a high level explanation very brief and i'll try to compress it within a few minutes and then if this video has made any sense to you or been able to clean one or two things please like the video so that many people can see it and share with your friends and also subscribe so that we can grow this channel to a place where we can invest more in creating content you know that can be helpful for people who are just starting out in this journey thank you once again for watching and joining this channel today i look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll be talking about specializations you know areas of specializations in cyber security that you can go in as a beginner thank you once again have a great time see you in the next video